The Homecoming. Look! There is a dragon coiled on the old banyan tree! What? A six-clawed dragon? So the rumors were true indeed. There is a dragon in this world. A loud flashing thunder almost tore open the sky on the dark rainy night. An injured dragon befell from heaven to earth. It crashed on the old banyan tree and coiled itself on it. The long horns of its scales were broken and dragon blood spilled freely, dripping all through the branches. It looked as if the raindrops were dripping from the sky. Even so, it was an awe-inspiring, magnificent scene. It emitted a supreme power. The power was so enticing and glorifying that all the other predators started trembling from the power that was being emitted as they prostrated themselves on the ground. A few neighboring senior citizens were scared out of their wits, and who wouldn't be? They immediately knelt before the powerful entity, bowing their heads in respect. It was as if they were paying respect and surrendering their whole being to this legendary celestial western dragon. In just a short period, the injured dragon transformed into millions of stars, and a weak light like a flickering flashlight directly shot through the window of the dark castle, precisely the third floor of the Volkov Citadel. Idiot! Dmitri was slumped on the sofa. He had been paralyzed for more than two years. At this moment, his body trembled ever so lightly. Dmitri Volkov, the heir to the infamous Volkov Citadel. He was one fine specimen, with blue eyes resembling the ocean, a five o'clock shadow, and a sharp jawline he can even put the Greek god Adonis to shame. A well-built body with tattoos all over his rock-hard chest was like a magnet to the lady's population. He was the bad boy in his school, but what made him different was his friendly persona. Dimitri, unlike his friends, was very friendly and congenial. He never fit into the dark character of high school. He was the topper of his class and did very well in sports. He was turned as the bad boy because of his body, not his personality. That intrigued many. Well, this was all before two years back. Something happened that drastically changed his life. Dimitri can never forget that dark day. It was a Sunday afternoon when Dimitri was returning home after giving his entrance exams. He was taking a ride on his favorite Aston Martin, DB Superleggera a beautiful customized gray beast. Dimitri had a passion for beautiful things, and this beast was at the top of his possession. It was raining cats and dogs that day. He was behind the driver's wheel. Dimitri never let anyone drive his cars, and this one he never even let his servants touch. He took care of it like a baby. He even called it a baby. Even after all this, he was a responsible driver. So that day, on the road, a puppy suddenly jumped on its way, and to save its life, Dimitri tried to evade crashing into it. During this occurrence, Dimitri lost control over his beautiful beast and crashed into a tree. The next thing he knows is waking up in a hospital. Dimitri hated hospitals. According to him, the strong, sterilized smell resembled death and hopelessness, hence his hatred for hospitals. He wanted to escape the depressing four white walls. In an attempt to do so, he tried to get down from his bed. That is when he realized that he could not feel his legs. Dimitri monitored his body, panically. He knew as much that his upper body was working just fine, then why could he not feel his legs? So many abominable thoughts started running through his mind. He screamed for help. The doctor and nurse came running to his aid. That is when the doctor revealed that he was paraplegic, a condition where only his upper body is responsive, but his lower body could not respond to the commands pushed down by his brain. Hence, he was a disabled person. That put an end to the ever-so-cheerful boy, Dmitri Volkov. 
his persona took a drastic change. Nowhere was the friendly, congenial Dimitri. In his place was a brooding, rude, and obnoxious Dimitri who stopped caring. Dimitri was now heartless. He did not care who he hurt. He was blunt. He stayed miles away from the crowd. He enjoyed silence now. When he was discharged from the hospital, he locked himself up in his room for a week. Everyone started walking on eggshells around him. He hated that too. Dimitri was just angry. Angry at the world for abducting the beautiful years of his life. Restricting his ambitions, he felt like a failure. And he took this frustration out on everyone else. He kept praying to every god in this universe, but it was to no avail. He lost his faith in God too. Now he was just a lonely man, filled with his sufferings and loneliness. While Dimitri was deep in his thoughts, a small dragon seal of light ascended through his window. It was the Dragon Emperor's soul, that soul imprinted on his forehead. Why has this emperor returned to Earth? This frail body? What is the use of this disabled body to this supreme emperor? The body of vessel and soul that overflowed was discovered by his foster father, Frederick Alden. He had even brought them to the mortal realm where he cultivated them and became the Dark Lord who could intimidate Dragon Star souls. Dragon Star souls are the suffering souls who died early before fulfilling their assigned role. Their unsettled soul transforms into a star in search of a vessel. A vessel was strong enough to absorb them and powerful enough to keep them intact. Frederick desired to rule the dragon world. Just as he was about to palm the Emperor Dragon's soul and ascend into the dragon world as the sole competitor to the throne, he was ambushed by his foster father and was brutally murdered. Since Frederick was a mortal, he had to slay and rule over all the three realms, the mortal realm, the divine realm, and the dragon realm. Surprisingly, he conquered the first two battlegrounds, but on his way to the third one, he met his fate. The one who slays the mortal, the divine, and the dragon becomes the celestial emperor of all times. These words by Frederick were deeply imprinted in Dimitri's soul. Dimitri looked over with hooded eyes. On the table, there was a glass of whiskey, a bucket of ice cubes, and a family photo. He now remembered that the Volkovs were a great ancient medical family whose names intimidated the whole Dracon village. It has been known as the three courts of a country with six scholars. It meant that in the past hundred years, there had been a doctor from a large country, three directors, and six provincial champions. This was a legacy, and Volkovs were a part of this ancient legacy. Originally, he should have been from a prestigious family, but he was pushed to humiliation and negligence. The order of his grandfather was to abandon Dimitri since he was a paraplegic. He would only bring shame to the medical family. In an instance, from the golden boy, he turned into a disabled, pitiful person whose grandfather considered him as a burden. Dimitri's parents were extremely supportive of him. They too decided to leave all the prestige and luxury behind to tend to Dimitri, and that was another big hit to Dimitri's already suffering soul. He could not comprehend the fact that the once proud grandfather would turn into a monster. All of this happened because of his ever so greedy and jealous cousin David Volkov. He was a greedy, manipulative piece of shit who easily glided through his grandfather's head as soon as Dimitri met with an accident. His adopted sister, Evelyn Mavis, wasn't even allowed to take the Volkov surname, nor was she allowed to step inside the ancestral sanctum. There were too many such humiliating incidents to count, and Dimitri lost the number a long time ago. At this moment, the sound of keys and the unlocking of a door interrupted Dimitri's thoughts. 
The door to the hall quickly opened and a tall, petite girl entered and slammed the door. The girl looked to be around 18. She was wearing a pink dress. Puberty certainly hit her beautifully. Her brunette hair was long and lustrous. Eve. Dimitri's voice was hoarse. He coughed and in a louder voice called out, Eve. This petite and beautiful girl in front of him was his adopted sister, Evelyn Mavis, short for Eve. Shh, D, be quiet or you won't get your share of candy, said Eve with a big smile on her face. That smile was like a tonic to Dimitri. He could not understand how this girl could brighten up his entire mood. Dimitri was waiting, waiting for his chance. He knew that his body was a vessel. He was waiting for the dragon soul to ascend and imprint in his body. Suddenly, a rugged, muscular voice permeated through the door. Hey, Evie baby, why are you running so fast? Are you afraid that I will eat you? Followed by a creepy laugh. Anton, if you don't leave the premises right now, I will be forced to call 911. Eve screamed. Why is that piece of shit Anton here? Frowned Dimitri. Anton was his sister-in-law's younger brother, but now they have been enemies for a long time. How can you do this? Do you not invite your guests to your house anymore? Of course, how would you know? You have never been given the proper etiquette. I have something to talk to you about. Now open this goddamn door, shouted Anton. Anton's voice was full of mockery and rage, with a hint of desperation. Desperation? Let's talk about it tomorrow. My family isn't home at the moment, and trust me, they won't be as polite to you, shouted Eve with a trembling voice. She was scared, scared to death by now. She was looking all around to find an escape, anything to get rid of Anton.